Okay, this video is titled Advanced Internal Ballistics. Uh, we're going to get into a lot more detail on some of these things we touched upon earlier. Uh, this particular topic is probably one of the most dynamic topics there is when we're talking about ballistics because there's so many different variables that all play on each other that affect uh, basically what's going on inside your rifle. That can change uh, things like your axis of your bore, what direction your bore is actually going to be pointing at the time your, your projectile leaves the muzzle, which can severely influence your point of impact, obviously. And also your internal ballistics can totally change your muzzle velocity of that projectile leaving, which can also cause a huge difference. So uh, there's a lot of different things in here. This is going to take a few videos to cover all these different things. Um, and they can be very, very difficult to keep track of. And the result has been historically that most long-range shooters have just kind of completely ignored this topic for the most part. And this is where a lot of the natural skepticism for, uh, you know, really questioning if someone makes a really good cold bore shot at long range. That's where a lot of this comes from is there's a lot of question marks in people's brains. It seems like some of this should be impossible to really get a handle on. Uh, but as we go through this, uh, I'm going to also be offering the solutions to dealing with these different problems that arise uh, as we go. And then at the very end of this portion, I'm going to go through and show you how to get set up with oh, the muzzle velocity corrections chart. And we'll show you how to minimize your uh, uh, bore access shifts as well. So although it's not really practical to deal with each little tiny variation that is possible of all these different changes of er internal ballistics, we can uh, come up with a very effective a streamlined system that we can put together when we're setting up our ballistics tables and that we uh, bring with us in the field that can allow us to correct for most of the big changes that we'll be experiencing. And this will really, really, really help you uh, improve your odds for a, a first round hit at long range is understanding this topic. So this is something you want to make sure you have a good understanding of before you get out there. And uh, a lot of times when you have strange misses out there at long range, um, People don't realize that a lot of that is attributed to some of these variations going on in the internal ballistics. Uh, internal ballistics, just as a definition uh, to refresh your memory, is that's everything that's going on inside the rifle system uh, before your projectile actually exits the muzzle. So uh, we did have that video earlier on uh, rifle harmonics and vibrations. We're not going to get into a huge amount of detail on that topic. We already kind of covered the idea of that, but uh, we are going to go through that here in this video, and we will tell you how to try to minimize some of the inconsistencies that we'll be experiencing so that when we set up our charts and we start uh, getting everything uh, quantified into these different numbers of holdover and all this that we're going to be applying onto our turrets, that it's going to match up with when, you know, when we actually get out in the field so that these uh, different variations and vibrations and all these different things going on don't throw us off as bad. So the first thing I'm going to do here on this introduction to uh, advanced internal ballistics is I'm going to do a preview of everything we're going to cover when we're talking about this subject. Uh, in this video, I'm going to talk about the uh, basic uh, sequence of events that occurs when you pull the trigger until the bullet exits the muzzle. I'll give you an overview of that to start off with. And then uh, we're going to review some of the different pressure dynamics that happen. We're going to look at a pressure curve. We're going to look at uh, uh, the different opposing forces that are going on as a bullet's uh, going down the bore. After that introduction, our uh, next video will be on bore axis shifts that uh, happen because of variations in internal ballistics, uh, specifically talking about harmonic and vibratory inconsistencies that occur. We already talked about rifle system rigidity when we talked about our harmonic and vibrations, uh, I think part seven or somewhere back in the, one of the earlier videos. Uh, but we're going to talk in more detail about uh, barrel whip action and things that can, can cause inconsistent barrel whip and uh, how to deal with that. We're going to talk about different rifle dynamics like uh, barrel and stock contact points, lockup of bolt lugs, lots of different things. We're going to get into some more of the mechanics of the actual weapon system itself. Uh, we're going to discuss uh, bore and projectile dynamics. That's basically talking about the friction that's going on between the projectile and the bore. 
depending on the varying conditions that occur within a bore out in the field. You have different degrees of, of fouling, of uh, coppering that happen, bore temperature, projectile temperature, things like that can change the friction of your bullet inside your bore, and that can uh, affect the harmonic and vibratory uh, nature of your rifle as you're shooting. And uh, differences in fouling or coppering or any of these different bore conditions will result in harmonic and vibratory inconsistencies. So we're going to show you how to deal with that. We're also going to discuss ammunition inconsistencies. Uh, this is still under the topic of harmonic and vibratory inconsistencies. Um, basically, if your ammunition is not perfectly consistent, you're going to have variations in the harmonic nature of how your rifle vibrates when you when you pull the trigger. So we're going to discuss uh, that in, in pretty good detail. We're going to talk about powder charges, case inconsistencies, improper primer seating, all kinds of stuff like that. So just a quick uh, review of what we kind of discussed before, and we will add on to it a lot more, uh, of the harmonics and vibratory inconsistencies in a rifle. And that all affects the bore axis shifts that we experience when we're shooting. That's talking about changing the direction of your bore. I don't know if you remember from the, the vibrations video, but, uh, you know, if you're, the end of your barrel's kind of doing some whip action, it's going to be pointing in different directions at any given millisecond. So keeping that consistent is going to be a priority. Another thing that can uh, also alter our bore axis shifts, that's the direction the bore's pointed, is poor rifle deployment. And uh, that can come out uh, and really result in inconsistent jump action. We'll discuss that. Talking about uh, how poorly established shooting positions can uh, really throw you off, how improper bipod deployment can throw uh, off uh, how your uh, weapon system basically jumps as you're shooting, uh, acts under recoil. We're going to talk about butt monopods and uh, some of the difficulties there. Uh, when A lot of rifle deployment issues. And also we're going to discuss sandbags in different ways of uh, deploying your weapon system to minimize the effects of uh, inconsistent jump action that happen under recoil. Uh, another thing that will severely throw off your uh, bore access shifts. And this is very, very re relevant to those of us who are going to be using a muzzle brake on, on our rifle. And if you use shooting a rifle that has heavy recoil and you're tempted to use muzzle brakes, this is something you have to be aware of, that there's a, a completely different uh, thing that gets added into the equation. It's called muzzle brake pull-off. Basically, your muzzle brake is going to be affecting the point of aim of your rifle, the axis of your bore, before the projectile leaves the muzzle. So by having a, a muzzle brake equipped on your rifle, that tremendously affects how you're going to have to deploy your weapon, how you lay behind the rifle. And a lot of this is uh, it's kind of hard to find out where I want to discuss some of these different issues in which video, but we're going to introduce that here, actually, uh, because this also ties into long-range uh, marksmanship. If you're using a muzzle brake on your rifle, that's going to severely affect how you lay behind that rifle. Otherwise, uh, there's weird things that happen uh, that can really change your point of impact and give you some bad inconsistencies due to muzzle brake pull-off. So that's one you definitely want to check out. We'll discuss how much... Uh, there's a lot of volume of air that basically is uh, going through your muzzle brake that starts pulling your rifle. Uh, it counteracts the recoil. And sometimes that can cause, uh, if you're muscling your rifle into a, a certain kind of position to get on target, that'll really throw you off. So that's going to tie in tremendously with our long-range marksmanship. And we'll discuss that more later as well. Uh, there's a whole other thing. That was all the different bore access shifts that can occur. So that, uh, just as a review real quick, we're going to talk about the harmonic vibratory inconsistencies that can change the axis of your bore. We're going to talk about the muzzle brake pull-off that can change the axis of your bore. Uh, and, you know, recoil dynamics as well, poor weapon uh, deployment. So those are things that can change which direction your bore is actually pointed. Now, a lot of these same, th same things we just discussed can also affect your muzzle velocity and your muzzle velocity variations that you're going to have with uh, any given ammo. Uh, we're going to discuss bore and projectile dynamics and their relationship when we're talking about muzzle velocity variations. We're going to discuss bore wear, uh, what fouling does to muzzle velocities, uh, coppering, that's uh, copper residue inside your bore, uh, bore temperature. This is all stuff you're going to really need to be aware of when you're setting up your uh, muzzle velocity 
uh, conversion charts. Uh, if you want to hit small targets at extreme range, you're going to have to understand this uh, very, very well. And you're going to have to be able to uh, properly maintain your weapon system to keep it consistent with uh, how you zeroed it when you, when you were when you're uh, making your charts and setting those up. So this is going to be very important for that. We're going to also talk about, I think I mentioned, bore temperature and projectile temperature. That can change how slippery a bullet goes down the bore as well. And there's uh, weird things like barrel memory and things like that can come into play. Another thing that can affect the variation of muzzle velocity, uh, which basically, you know, that speeds up your bullet or slows it down compared to what your charts are. And this is all something we're going to have to get a handle on. Uh, before you take the shot, you're going to have to be able to calculate or basically uh, predict at what muzzle velocity your bullet is going to exit based on your bore conditions your temperature conditions, and various other things. So another thing we need to discuss here, talking about muzzle velocity variation, is rifle manufacturing tolerances. I'm going to talk about chamber dimensions and things like that and how that can affect it. Ammunition inconsistencies will be huge. Uh, you can have huge variations in uh, muzzle velocity just based on your ammunition. Uh, especially if you're reloading, there are uh, numerous things you're going to have to be aware of. So we're going to be trying to minimize ammunition inconsistencies that increase your variations in muzzle velocity. So we're going to talk about factory ammo, which is going to be real brief, but we're going to mostly discuss uh, reloading. And we're going to uh, discuss all these various component issues when we're talking about cases. We're going to discuss uh, like case consistency. We're going to have a discussion on uh, propellant, the, the gunpowder. We're going to talk about different primer issues and projectile quality. And then also while we're talking about reloading, I will do a video at least on uh, reloading equipment and reloading uh, basics and tips for long-range reloading. Things that you do need to be aware of while you're putting your ammunition together because I've experienced some strange problems shooting extreme range. Actually, the last time I went out, I ran into some problems with case length that I uh, kind of forgot about uh, the last time I reloaded, and that severely affected my muzzle velocity, and it was causing me to hit almost a mil high. That's like a meter high at 1,000 meters, okay? I was hitting that much high because I forgot to trim my cases. So there are uh, certain things that you definitely have to be aware of. So we're going to discuss all those different things. We're going to talk about uh, you know, uh, how to lube cases, uh, resizing, deburring flash holes, you know, all the reloading stuff you guys were asking about throughout these videos. Talking about bullet seating, cartridge overall length, and all these different things. After that, we're going to discuss ammunition temperature and its relationship with muzzle velocity variation. Uh, that's a big one. We're going to have to build a chart uh, basically logging our ammunition uh, temperature velocities, okay? So you're going to, one of the first things we're going to do before you can even really do your uh, ballistics tables is you're going to have to have a pretty good log of uh, your load after you develop your load of the exact muzzle velocities of that ammunition at different temperature ranges and bore ranges as well uh, or bore conditions. So uh, we're going to discuss propellant burn rate changes that occur with temperature. I mean, the nature of propellants and uh, projectile movement, that... That's uh, very important understanding this topic. So we're going to discuss uh, the ammunition burn rate curve. And we're going to set you up in this part of the video series with setting up uh, ammunition burn rate conversion chart. And we'll do that by logging your, uh, your uh, muzzle velocities. So if you guys are curious right now, what can you get started on? Um, I would recommend if you already got your rifle and your optics set up and you're sitting there on your uh, hands kind of wondering what, what can I start doing, uh, bring out your notebook and your in the field when you're doing your uh, load development, your target shooting or whatever, or even if you're messing around long range shooting and uh, take really, really detailed logs of your muzzle velocities right now. You can, that's something you can get started on and uh, you want to measure your ammunition temperature immediately before the shot. And uh, you want to, you want to measure how warm it is. And then you uh, log the temperature for that velocity. And also, the more detail you have, the better. You will also want to log if you just cleaned your bore. That's going to affect your muzzle velocity. Or uh, if your bore is getting real fouled. Or any other weird things that might be going on. If it's really wet or something that day, you want to log all that in your muzzle velocity logs. Um, so also in the d discussion with ammunition temperature and muzzle velocity variation, 
we're going to talk about causes of ammo temperature changes. And uh, there, like, uh, there's ambient air temperature, obviously, how hot it is or how cold it is that day. Sunlight and uh, chamber temperature. So like what a lot of guys talk about, cold bore shots versus hot bore shots. We're going to discuss that in detail. Uh, we're also going to talk about solutions to dealing with ammunition temperature issues. And um, not only just using our ammo burn rate conversion charts that we're going to build, but we're going to talk about how to properly store your ammo in the field. So when you're deploying your weapon system, we're going to tell you where to put your ammo and how to, how to uh, basically deal with it when you're in the field to keep your temperatures consistent and uh, to minimize the effects of uh, like things like sunlight and things like that. So we'll, we'll go over that. Also, an uh, uh, important thing to note that we're going to go over is that there's a lot of other things like uh, copper jacket lubricity at different temperatures and uh, how slippery that's going to be wh when your bullet's going down that steel bore. So temperature affects those things as well. And uh, also, you know, your lead, uh, the plasticity of the actual lead in the, the projectile can change with temperature. So uh, that can affect muzzle velocity or if you're shooting solid copper bullets, all these things can affect muzzle velocity. That's why when you lay down and start recording your velocities, there is a variation between them. Well, why is this one 25 feet per second faster than the other one? Well, it's all these different things we're going to talk about. And what we're going to attempt to do is provide, uh, at the end of this, it, it might seem mind-boggling at first, like, okay, I quit this sport. This is too difficult. Uh, but as you'll see when we're done with this, I am going to give you the streamlined way of dealing with this. And uh, it's not impossible to do, and it's not really that hard. It's just uh, a matter of keeping everything as consistent as possible and things that you cannot control, you log. And uh, we'll be able to, we'll be able to uh, get around this one way or the other.